the absolute last, you know, breath of the private sector. And so that's where the real drive to uh, move to electronic currency is all about. And they see it as preventing you from running to the bank and taking your money out. So it eliminates a bank run. And that's their main purpose in Europe. So secondly is they want to collect absolutely every, you know, penny they think you owe in taxes. So it, it, it's getting to be really crazy. I mean, you're not going to, with these people, they want to basically take it to the point where you cannot buy or sell anything without approval of the government. And so bottom line, in layman's terms, and again, a major documentary feature hit film was made about your predictions coming true that was released uh, last year, has a 7.9 rating. It's very high on IMDb, uh, the forecaster. We can put the uh, IMDb um, screen up there for TV viewers, uh, the forecaster. It's a documentary about you. And so it's really scary to hear somebody of your prominence, Mr. Armstrong, saying what so many of us have seen the signs of, uh, because you know, you know a lot of these people, you're on the inside. We see them pushing it now openly and saying, we want to get rid of cash, so you have to keep your money in the bank so we can basically bail in and take whatever we want. That is frightening, and we see Greece as a microcosm. No amount of money ever paid uh, into this will prop it up. I mean, is that what you're saying? Nothing will keep Humpty Dumpty together? No, I mean, absolutely every government in the world is following the same exact system. And they just borrow year after year, and they never pay anything off. And when I have met with them, uh, I met with the U.S. Treasury during the Reagan period, and the national debt was a trillion. And that's when Volcker raised interest rates, you know, up to, you know, they were going up to 17%. And I'm looking at this and saying, my God, just put it into a calculator. The national debt's going to be at $6 trillion by the end of the decade. And I met with them, and I said, you know, I thought, well, maybe you don't see this, or what's, you know, what's going on here? You're crazy with this stuff. And they said, yeah, but Marty will be paying back with cheaper dollars. And so I said, okay, <laughs> you guys know what you're doing. And it, everything is a dog and, and, and pony show. Um, I guess what made me so famous was when I, I got called in for uh, the formation of G5. And I, you know, I first thought I made it. You know, I was one of 35 people in the world being consulted. And, and then you, you get there and it's like, okay, how do we save the world economy? Oh, sorry, your 15 minutes is up next. And then they stand up and they say, this is what we're going to do. And we've consulted the top experts and they do nothing that anybody ever told them to do. So it's really a dog and pony show, and um, this whole thing is about really their power and retaining it. That's it. Well, we see this not just in economics and not just banking, but in every major sector now with the EU and the U.S. government and others. They call in the experts, the top people, ignore everything they say, but then say we've talked to the experts. It's like the Delphi technique where they'll say Agenda 21, which is global regulations at the local level they'll call everyone in say thank you we've heard what you want and then they'll do basically the opposite of what the people want but then claim they did what they said like you said it's a dog and pony show i guess to pacify economists or them when it all crashes say well we consulted them when the economists actually told them different well in 85 after i went through this you know i got you know, I said, the, he the hell with this. And I wrote a letter, you know, directly to the White House. And I said, you people are crazy. You're going to cause a crash within two years. Our, our biggest problem is those in government, honestly, are lawyers. All right, with no practical experience. And they think that they just, all they have to do is write a law, and then you have to do it. It's not a question of how those things function. It, it's, well, we'll just make it do with this. And so in 85, forming the G5, the dollar was up dramatically at that point. The, the Deutsche Mark was like four to the dollar. Um, and they basically...
just stood up and said, okay, fine, we're going to, you know, we want to see the dollar 40% lower. And that was the 87 crash. And because I went public and warned them they were going to create this crash if they do this, I mean, a common sense, you, you sold the Japanese, you know, everything from Rockefeller Center on down. And they own like more than a third of the U.S. national debt. Now you stand up and you say you're going to devalue it by 40%. Don't you think they would sell? Um, there's no rational discussion with these people. And so they just started selling, and that was your 87 crash. When I got called in for that, I didn't want to go in at all. And they started lobbying my friends. And they said, oh, you know, Marty, you got to do this. I said, you haven't had to deal with these people. I said, I, you know, it's a waste of time. So they called so many of my friends, and they said, look, they're blaming computers. If you don't go in and do this, they're going to come take our computers away. So I went in, and honestly, the first thing they say, well, we're going to find the person that, that, you know, shorted this market and made it go down. And I just said, look, every investigation since 1907 began that way. You never found anybody. I said, that's not what makes markets. Good. There isn't a cow that kicked over the can and burned down St. Louis. No, I mean, it's just what happens is, is that you, everybody's wrong. And then for whatever reason, something scares them. And they tried it to basically sell, and there's no bid. That's a flash crash. A market just immediately collapses. And it's not that somebody comes in and short and sells, overpowers the market. I mean, you know, that's a nice theory, but it's never happened. It's just that the majority are long, and they're trying to sell, and there's no bid. So well, it's, Let's it's, expand on that, then, and, and, and then... We can go back in time. It's important, obviously, to do that. But looking at current things, how ominous is it? Let's talk about this secret meeting in London to end cash. And along with that now is this huge push in the media to get rid of cash. Uh, that's a bold move. But, but uh, again, let's talk about why they would want to do that, A, but then B, about the secret meeting. Well, that's how they, they pulled this off. The, the media is part of the tool. And... It was Larry Summers who first came out and said, gee, interest rates should go negative. Now, he wasn't in the administration. He was just at Harvard. So what happens is they can, if the market rejects it, they can say, oh, that's just him talking. If it accepts it, all right, they're right behind it. So this is how politics really works. So what you're seeing right now is the media coming out, yeah, 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 we should get rid of cash. You know, and that is, is the balloon. They're floating. They're trying to get, yes, everybody, they're trying to get everybody accustomed to it. And largely so that they can just, it's in the U.S., they want taxes. My sister just went to go buy a house, all right, to get a mortgage. And um, my mother had written her a check for $400 reimbursing her for some medicine that she picked up. And because that was in her account, she had to explain what the $400 was, why it was given to her. I mean, 400 bucks. I mean, it is, you have to give detail to every dime you have and where it came from. They're training us to live in a 1984 economic society and they admit, so they have total control. It's absolute total control. And it is scary because um, I was just over in Europe. In Spain, they have basically shut down all the retail gold coin sellers. You can sell your gold, but you can't find bullion coins to buy. Not even the banks sell them any anymore. You can in Italy, and you can in Germany. Mm. France, they've been shutting it down, and also over in Spain. So it. They're trying to, to kill any potential underground economy as well. And it, it's, it's very interesting, but uh, that's the direction they want to go in. They, they never see themselves as the problem. You're the problem. And they and believe you. that they can prop up the euro and all these big systems by bringing in economic totalitarianism. Won't that just stall economies even more? The economy, what, the reason I've been pretty much so vocal, um, been coming from the professional side, liquidity is, is absolutely evaporating. And it is scary 
because that means when this thing turns down after October and, and government bonds, etc., you're going to see a massive, I mean, collapse, massive, because there's no bid. Good God. And it, it's really, capital is scared to death everywhere, and they've been selling the longer-term paper, 10-year bonds, etc., the bonds have crashed, and they're moving everything into like 30-day to, to six-month paper max. And because nobody knows what's going on. Mr. Armstrong, has we've got to go to break. Uh, I should have brought up your articles about coming crash first. Uh, just I always seem to do interviews this way where the bombshell stuff comes at the end. I want to come back and try to give you the floor to really spend 10 minutes, if you can, presenting to everybody as a leading economist, highly respected, you know, mainstream articles about your predictions coming true, what you're saying, because you're talking about October, you're talking about end of the year, 2016, when are you saying this crash comes? What do you think it looks like? Uh, you predicted the 87 situation. We want to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. We implode and basically turn nation states into vassals. The issue, though, is they allowed the countries to continue to create their own debt. And so, as this economist was telling us, respected economist, it's now infected the whole thing. And the greed and the fractional reserve banking going to the next level of derivatives and credit default swaps, it's now makes Bernie Madoff look like a saint, in my opinion. And, and the guy was obviously a crook. This is crazy. And I've talked to so many economists, top economists, and they say it's impossible, it's untenable. Even people like Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who was in, you know, their as Reagan's chief economist. So we're looking at an explosive situation. Coming up in about 10 minutes, I'm going to play the trailer. It came out last year, was a big hit for the forecaster. So you get an idea of uh, what Mr. Armstrong is basically breaking down. Armstrongeconomics.com, Martin Armstrong. Uh, so, so try to condense it all because uh, I've been asking questions. I've been interrupting all of it together. The war on cash, the consolidation, Looks like we're going to a feudal system where everything we do is categorized, tracked, uh, and they believe through a command and control economy, they can basically prop up anything, uh, which is clearly impossible. I can figure that out with a calculator. Uh, and then you talk about a crash coming after October. Can you try to boil down why, when, and what it's going to look like? Um, each one of these business cycles... Um it's basically a, a mapping it out, and it's it's roughly an 8.6 year cycle. And you can go to our site. Even Paul Volcker wrote a book in 1978, and it was called Rediscovery of the Business Cycle, meaning that the the new era of new economics, the government could absolutely flatline it and create perpetual growth, failed. And so. What this is, is that each one, the timing remains the same, but what is actually the focus shifts from one to the other. So one time you're going to have it um, stock market, then you're going to have a commodity market, then you're going to have real estate. So this particular one, uh, which turns in, uh, on October 1st, is a concentration of capital in, in government debt. So... You can see it from the standpoint that interest rates are historically low, you know, at negative levels. So just ask yourself, traditionally, you know, when the capital is concentrated in the private sector, like a stock market, it crashes, the bonds go up because that's where everybody rushes to, for the, we call it a flight to capital or quality. So what happens when the problem is in government? That's when the private sector takes off. And <clears throat> so we're most likely going to see an initial, you know, false reaction and, and like the share market's down. But they will be the buying opportunity because what's crashing at this stage in a game is government debt. I mean, just look at Illinois. I mean, Chicago is a basket case. Um, you have more than 50% of the municipal governments in the United States bankrupt. You have the same problem in Germany. And Germans are looking at adding another 15% tax to bail out the municipal. And so it's everybody's on a bailout mode. It, it just, the system doesn't work. It was never designed properly. And so what we have is, is really a meltdown. Uh, and 
it's on the governmental side. So normally you say crash and everybody thinks you're talking about the stock market. This time it's bonds. Okay, and 